Hey there, this is Amy Williams, and I am here with my friend and neighbor, Dr. Greg Hurlbut, who was telling me some fabulous things today that I hadn't thought of about staying healthy. Take it away, Greg. Well, I was talking to Amy about the coronavirus and some tips to stay healthy. You've heard about washing your hands, avoiding touching your face, you know, keeping surfaces around you clean, avoiding gathering, keeping your distance from people, working from home if possible. Another thought would be to, you know, keep separate clothes for home and away. Um, a couple of principles I really want to emphasize that I've been emphasizing to my patients are the understanding that you want to keep the river that's in your nose flowing. Your nose makes a pint of fluid every day and it uses this to clean itself, lubricate your throat, and conveniently dumping all your acquired viruses and bacteria into your stomach acid to be killed. This is very helpful for your health. A second concept is that, that your body's healing response needs to be optimal. With the importance of our American diet causing a lot of inflammation, um, and it's heavily weighted towards storable processed foods, in other words, wheat, corn, rice, potatoes, you know, processed starches, sugars, and alcohol, we really want to emphasize a diet that reduces inflammation. Some people call it an anti-inflammatory diet. This is a diet rich in vegetables, fruits, you know, grass-fed beefs, animals, grass-fed animals, and wild-caught fish. This sort of diet reduces the body's exaggerated response to injury and would generally help you have a less intense infection should you acquire the illness. So what I've heard you say is that the most important thing is to keep yourself healthy because there's a chance that a lot of people will get some even mild form of the virus, but you want to be able to knock it out of your system? Certainly we'd like to try to avoid it, but if you would happen to come in contact with your, the illness, your own body's responses, i.e. the river in your nose, and just if you would come, become sick, reducing the intensity of the infection can be alleviated by some of these simple things that we've talked about. So exercise, getting an adequate rest, but it seems rather unnatural since we're social creatures to have people say keep your distance and keep out of social gatherings, but we really need this in the short run so that we don't overwhelm the medical system when if you have the illness and you need care, we need to have enough capacity to deal with the illness. So that's where we're coming up with the concept of flattening the curve and spreading out the potential exposure to illness by isolating people here initially in the next few weeks. So it doesn't spread like the countries that are getting hit hard. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So we want to stay healthy. I, I want to just go back to the, the why of that thing you said about the river in your nose. That was so, that was so interesting to me that basically our body produces all that and are you saying that the stomach acid is what kills it then when it right. washes right down yeah and what was the thing about hot water you were talking about drinking hot liquids warm beverages there's just a variety of ways of keeping your nose river flowing in the cold winter months we want to kind of protect our membranes from drying out and chilling because that's what allows the virus to penetrate and basically stop your river and turn it into a mud puddle it's this <laughs> thicker mud puddle that you aspirate into your lungs and getting pneumonia in addition to the insult from the virus itself. So things like drinking warm liquids, steaming your face, using salt water to irrigate your nose, even using expectorants such as mucinex or spicy foods. Expectorants irritate your stomach to make your nose run. They work far more effective if you're well hydrated. Other things would be to use Vicks on your chest. This irritates your nose to make it run. So there's a number of ways we can help our rivers. <laughs> I love that. So essentially you're saying a runny nose is not a bad thing. It's a way to keep things moving and do right, what needs to be done. Right. An old fashioned way would be if you did what your mom said was to come in and drink a hot beverage by the fire. In other words, you're warming up your membranes and, and keeping them moist. In Europe, we would say take a sauna two or three times a week for your health. So. In the morning before I leave for work, I drink a hot cup of water, and then when I get home at night, I drink a hot cup of water. Again, everything is about trying to keep your membranes warm, moist, and your river flowing. 
Well, and I want to go back to one other thing. All of that is so fabulous. And what you said right as we started about having different clothes at work and at home. Obviously, you as a healthcare professional are in contact with a lot of ill people. You gave me that advice. I knew I had to see someone who had a mild fever. It was actually gone by the time I saw them, but I was going to do an immune process on her. And so I did the things, you know, the sterile precautions. I used a mask. She used a mask. I changed clothes. I, I took off my clothes and got in the shower, like you had mentioned, and then put on completely different clothes when I got home. And that's just a precaution, really, to keep all of the stuff out of your house. Yeah, so it might not be a bad idea to consider having clothes for wear when you're away from home. And then when you come home, take the clothes off, throw them in the wash, shower yourself, and then you have a separate set of clothes at home. Now this may not be necessary for a lot of people, but it might be something for people to consider, particularly in the healthcare profession. And couldn't hurt, right? Couldn't hurt. <laughs> Thank you so much. This has been a lot of fun, and I hope that a lot of people get uh, the good out of it that I did this morning. Thank yeah, you. Thanks.